It was a chilly day, but I felt all warm inside because I just tagged my first great knot. His feathers were so soft and I could feel his little heart beating. His tag may say E-A-A, but he's beep beep to me. It's amazing that something so fragile was going on such a tough journey, but he wasn't going alone. From here in Australia all the way to Russia, I was tracking him every step of the way. Watching as he flew with his friends, harnessed tailwinds, flapped all the way to the Yellow Sea. Here he found stopover sites, nature's motels. Here he could rest and recharge, full of tasty worms, friends to chat. Beak beak? I contacted other researchers and posted messages to the birdwatching communities, but nobody had seen Beak Beak. So I travelled after Beak Beak to see what happened. Maybe he flew into a building? Mm, maybe someone had demolished the site. He could have eaten polluted food or couldn't find any food at all. I arrived at the location where a signal disappeared. And the local ranger told me they caught a hunter here about a week ago, but no sign of Beak Beak. Such a small bird in such a big world. Hmm. Where are you, little buddy? Oh. Hello. A researcher from Russia called me? And guess what? He saw Beak Beak. Victor took me to where he spotted Beak Beak. Deep in the Arctic tundra of the Russian Far East. Beak. <laughs> and he wasn't alone. In a few months, Beak Beak and his family will be flying back to Australia. That's over 5,000 kilometers, full of dangers like these. Without better protection and management of sites along its migratory route, how can we make sure they get home safely? I hope to see you back in Australia, little buddy. You can help to protect Great Knot and other migratory water birds. Tell others about the importance of protecting them and the habitats they need to survive. Join and promote World Migratory Bird Day activities.